Hey guys and girls, Nathan here. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Just waiting for everyone to come online. Everyone. Cool. So, um, hopefully everyone is having an awesome week. So, um, I think we're all live and all good to go. And uh, today, I want to get into a few um, discussions with everybody and talk about a few random things. So, um, firstly, uh, we are in an official recession. Woohoo! We're in a recession, right? Uh, very, very different uh, type of recession to um, to what we've experienced in the past. You know, uh, usually you would uh, be expecting to see long lines of people queuing up, people with tattered clothes. Uh, in potato sacks, uh, not able to eat food, uh, etc. And uh, today we have, uh, you know, some businesses achieving all new time highs. Um, we've got really interesting things happening out there in the recession. So uh, a, few, a few of the things that I want to talk about uh, this week uh, is one, um, a little bit about information, what you are feeding yourself education-wise. Uh, a lot of people are still brainwashed by the media out there. So I'm going to talk to you about that and go into a few uh, ways of how you can get new information. Uh, two, I'm going to run through uh, some of the news articles, what's happening out in the marketplace, um, and talking about what I see happening with the economy moving forward. So uh, yeah, as I said, we're in a, um, we are in a recession and very different to a normal type of recession. Uh, my phone, my spare phone has, uh, and uh, um, my phone has jammed up whilst I'm trying to um, get my news articles. So um, Gemma just wrote here, uh, hello to all the success stories, present and future from the IR team. So Gemma uh, looks after uh, you know, investors and their, their positions and, um, yeah, helps communicate between uh, myself and my investors and uh, helping achieve people really cool results out there. So yeah, uh, getting straight into the news. Uh, this was an article out on September the 2nd. Uh, this just here, news just in everybody. Uh, Australia is in a recession. Um, economic plunge worse than feared. Huge decline due to the word that I may not mention, crisis. Uh, economists knew today's economic fingers were gonna be bad, but the actual news is much worse than anybody feared. Australia's finances have been hit with the biggest quarterly fall on record and the steepest annual plunge since the end of World War II. Yeah. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Scamo said the economic figures represented a heartbreaking day for the nation. Yeah, heartbreaking. I think heartbreaking is more how the people have been talking in, in Melbourne sound like when I'm talking to them about how shit their, their life is at the moment due to the fact that they're stuck under house arrest. But, you know, apparently the stock market is very heartbreaking. The recession is very heartbreaking. And it's all due to that word that I may not mention um, of alleged illness. Go, this day is devastating day for Australia, he told Parliament. Our economy has been savaged savaged, right, by that word with the number at the end of it, um, global scamdemic and recession. It is delivering an awful and heartbreaking blow to Australians and their families all around the country, right? Notice the rhetoric now, right? It's because of this that now we have a recession. Uh, it doesn't say in there that the recession started three years ago that on the 11th of October, 2018, uh, we went into a negative yield curve and there was a death cross and everything spiraled out of control. Nor that on September 11, 2019, um, that we saw um, the repo market being purchased up by the central banks in New York and uh, $100 billion a day of bailout stimulus started to be injected. Doesn't say anything about that. Doesn't say that our economy was so crap we had to drop interest rates on June the 4th uh, in 2019. Uh, just goes on to say that it was because of this that we've got a recession. Now we've got to print off a lot of money and we've got to fix it all up, guys. But it's just because of this said 
problem that now we've got a recession. But let's look deeper. The writing was on the wall three years ago, right? four years ago. I made text messages back uh, in 2016, September 2016, to my mates, which I've published out there. I've put in a birch feed, put on my Instagram, uh, put it into different uh, mediums of my actual screenshots of what would occur uh, with the liquidity back in September uh, in 2016. So it always falls in around September, October is when the wheels fall off these cards. And guess what, guys? We are in September 2020, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm ready for what's coming. And this is one of the biggest opportunities that I see out there just in you know what they're going to be doing next so you know you can be watching oh what's going to happen who's going to be winning on married at first side and who's going to win on that fucking masked uh you know show or you could be looking at you know how am i going to get myself uh, some personal liberty and freedom how am i going to get myself my family financial independence how am i going to come out of this thing on top so where are you getting information from guys and girls so um He's gone on to say, right, Australians know why we are now in a word that we will not say, recession. And they also know, as the government has known, that this day, as I said, would come, the government has acted to protect lives and livelihoods. I don't know, maybe say that to all the people that are suicide recently, right? Someone has to say it, guys. Someone has to say it. Um, and when you have, when you compare the recession we're now into others, the severity of the situation is clear. How does, and this is quoted from Scamo, the Prime Minister of Australia, how does the word with a number on it crisis compare to Australia's earlier recessions? We don't know how long the recovery will be, but certainly the decline has been much larger and faster than anything we have seen before. Um, they go on to report. So if we go back and watch a video series on YouTube called Raw and Uncut, someone recently said it sounds like a an adult video. I may not say what type of adult video because algorithms will try and uh, you know muzzle me just like the masks that have been worn on people. But Raw and Uncut sounds like a video like that type of video, um, but it's not. As a five-part webinar series that I did uh, in January 2018. Uh, warning, it's about 10 hours of filming. Um, it's a warning of an incoming depression. Uh, I, if, if we quote some words that had come out of my mouth from two years ago, uh, before everyone said I was off my head, uh, I went on to say it was called the GFD, the Global Financial Depression. Um, and I said it would be of biblical proportions. And now we are in a recession, which Brian, Blind Freddy could have told you. Uh, we are in a depression. It's gonna be an inflationary depression is the definition of what I would call it. Um, and it is of biblical proportions, right? So a big flood came and took Noah's Ark away, right? Uh, you could have prepared for it and been saved and had two sheep and two pigs and two cows and two humans and whatnot. Or you could have had your economic Ark ready. You could have had Noah's Ark of your finances ready, right? It's not too late. And this is why there's exciting times out there. Goes on to read, the release of the June national account started this morning revealed the catastrophic extent of the word crisis. Uh, data paints a picture uh, of an economic blood path with the economy contracting by a staggering 7% through the quarter. That is the worst ever result. <gasps> it's the worst ever result ever, right? Wow. Never seen anything like that beforehand, guys. Never seen anything like it. It follows a modest, a little modest of a 0.3% contraction in the March quarter when everyone was told to stay at home and, you know, had a little house on you. Everyone is promoting this little house. It looks like it got an eye in there and it looks like it's on a 33 degree angle roof here. But anyway, um, previously, the biggest drop was in 1974 when the Australian economy contracted by just 2%. So the largest ever was 2%, right? And here we are at 7%. Um, looking at how it looks on a chart, it is off a cliff, right? That looks like a big recession slash depression. It means we are now in the grip of our first recession in 30 years amid the worst yearly 
uh, growth contraction since World War II. The economic disaster, they're calling it an economic disaster now, uh, is even more severe than expected by experts and even the Reserve Bank. Uh, even the Reserve Bank have chimed their lovely heads in and said it's worse than what they expected. I would love to swear right now, right? But my videos will be censored, right? That's why I love when you guys can share them, like them, uh, tag your mates, and uh, share them around on social media so the word gets out there. Um, going on, uh, economists have predicted the figures to show a 5 to 7% contraction, although the majority expected a 6% fall in the quarter and 5.2% fall annually, with the final result at the higher end of the range forecast. The global scamdemic and associated containment policies led to a 7% fall in GDP uh, in the June quarter, head of national accounts at ABS. Head of other things too. Um, Somber, oh poor, my condolences go out to Josh Frydenberg um, when he said the GDP figures were heartbreaking. That's what it says, the somber treasurer. Um, behind these numbers are heartbreaking stories of hardship being filled by everyday Australians as they go about their daily lives. Right? Businesses have been screwed up. Um, people's jobs have been screwed up. Their finances have been screwed up. These things are a friggin' mess, guys. These are a mess out there for lots and lots of people. How are they gonna get through it, right? How are they gonna get through it? There's only one way out. They have shown their hands on this, right? They have shown their hands on this. Um, goes on to read, be it the tourism operator in Cairns, the tradie in Melbourne, the cafe worker in Adelaide, the domestic flight tenant in Sydney. They have all been hit hard by the said word. The road ahead will be long, the road ahead will be hard, and the road ahead will be bumpy. Without JobKeeper wage subsidy, Mr. Frydenberg, said more than seven, 700,000 more Australians would be out of a job. Uh, hence why we cannot get rid of um, JobKeeper now. Uh, the PM also struck an optimistic note in Parliament, arguing that the recovery would come as the economy reopened. Australia will grow and will recover and grow and jobs will come back. That plan uh, that plan is built on resilience and strength and the enterprise of Australian built people. No, it's not. It's on the uh, expansion of the balance sheet and the devaluation of your currency. That's what it really is. Um, uh, so yeah, goes on to read that. Right? So that's the article. Right? Poor, poor economy. We've got a very sad day indeed. Uh, we're in a big recession. We're actually in depression, guys. So you've heard it here first. You heard it from my mouth two years ago when everyone said, oh, virtues of properties, Veruca. And I said, look, hold off. And we're going to see a market going to a depression. We're going to see massive inflation. We're at the point we're about to see takeoff. Right. I took this photo. Um, this was just a screenshot. And uh, this was the stock market from last week. This was taken uh, at 10.52 a.m., um, at 10.52 p.m. Uh, that evening from when uh, the said results came out. And what did we see? We saw the one-day chart, and the chart went up on the stock market from 5,983 points all the way up to 6,078 points. So it's about 100 points that it rose on that were in the biggest recession uh, since ever. <laughs> right? So we've got the biggest recession ever, the biggest contraction in GDP ever, and we have seen the stock market just go, oh, we've just moved up another 100 points on the, another 100 pips, and here we go. Nothing, Nothing's to see here, guys. I wish my emails would stop. They just keep coming through. Um, so if you're hearing buzzing noises, uh, heaps of emails coming through. Um, so we go on to another article. I, I don't like, you know, these news um, <laughs> out of the um, out of the uh, news outlets. However, this is an interesting one. Um, this was on September the 3rd at 9.32am. Um, and it was our treasurer, uh, treasurer lays out, bought forward income tax cuts plan to get Australia's out of a recession, right? Just remembering when they introduced the first homeowner grant back in the early 2000s, folks, that never disappeared. Right? Just remembering when they enact these things, 
They don't ever disappear. Childcare rebates in the 90s, right? We all remember in the 90s, some of you are too young, that's all right. Um, but you know, in the early 90s, there was this thing called a, uh, a household where the dad, and I'm not being stereotypical here, anyone, I'm not being sexist, I'm not being pig or anything like that. So people have those views, that's cool, that's their opinion and they're entitled to that. But you would have typically a parent being, well, almost even skirting around it, right? The dad would normally go out to work, the mum would stay home, raise the kids, spend time with the kids. How did they get out of the recession in 1992? That's very interesting, right? So what they did is that they enslaved the wife, right? Or the mother of the child. So you had to have mum and dad go out there, be a tax slave, pay down the nation's debt. They gave some childcare rebates, which they still do as the family tax benefits. And uh, these things never disappeared either, right? So when we look at our economy in 2020 and see what measures are being put in place, we need to look at what uh, could be the ramifications of them uh, you know, doing said policy. So will JobKeeper disappear? Who knows if it'll disappear, right? It's just gone down. The last payment came out the last few days and coming out to people at the moment, the businesses, and it'll be reassessed and they will keep the JobKeeper at 1200 bucks a fortnight instead of 1500 Let's see what the result of that will turn out to be because I know for sure that all those businesses in Melbourne that cannot leave their house or go 5Ks, there's gonna be massive, massive problems in there and they have shown their hand, right? So when people say this Dan Andrews bloke from down in Melbourne, uh, good luck to him. Uh, hopefully he's loving life and all that sort of stuff. But when they say, uh, let's leave him be, what I predict that they're gonna to do to him is leave him out there, right? And they're gonna say, because of what he has done, we need to extend JobKeeper at the higher level, right? And they can't make a discrimination against a business in Sydney or a business in, you know, people just register their businesses in Melbourne, right? But I believe that they're gonna to have to put out some more stimulus packages in order to recover from the losses which has been caused from the lockdown in Melbourne, right? So what a great way, right? It's a scapegoat. If it was me and old Scamo, the Prime Minister of Australia, I would go out there and um, probably do the same thing. That's why I thought of the idea. But it's not. So um, let's see what happens. Uh, it goes out to read from the Treasurer, uh, an emergency rescue plan is being prepared in the wake of Australia's financial catastrophe, right? I'll call it the GFD, the Global Financial Depression, because it's going to be global, it's going to be financial, and it's going to be a depression, there's going to be a lot of depressed people, a lot of people out of work, a lot of people out of money, and it's going to be of biblical proportions. And here we are in 2020 in a biblical proportion world, and we've now got uh, a catastrophe and financial catastrophe out here. So I'd love to see one day global financial depression. It'd be just lovely. I'd love to see it. So anyway, it goes on to read, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg has hinted that personal income tax worth $20 billion. So do you remember we got our little tally, right? We should sit there one day, maybe one day I'll sit there and make an Excel spreadsheet and put together all of these stimulus packages that have occurred over the course of 2020 and share with you guys how we've actually hit a trillion dollars worth of stimulus packages already, right? This has been six months into a depression and they've printed a trillion dollars. What is different from now and the Great Depression is that they weren't printing money and going grrr, printing money, right? They were, um, they didn't have the opportunity to do so. So I just realized for the first time ever, I have cash in my pocket. So it's not really worth anything anyway, but uh, anyway. Um, uh, goes on to read, uh, he's given $20 billion worth of tax cuts which have been brought forward to help the country cope with devastation, devastating recession sparked by the said problem out there, starting with a C and entering in a number. Uh, speaking with ABC on Thursday morning, uh, Mr. Frydenberg indicated that the cuts originally slated for mid-2022 will be needed much sooner. Why will they needed much sooner? These are his words, will be needed much sooner right? Because we are screwed. The economy is screwed. The only way for us to get out of it is to print our way through it, right? Just remembering inflationary depression, right? Depression looks very different today than what it did in the past, right? They have the ability to go and print more of those worthless pieces of plastic with dead criminals printed on them. It goes on to read, they are expected to form a part of the central part of the government's fiscal response to the recession in the upcoming budget, which they haven't done, remind you. They haven't done 
a, a, a budget uh, this year. The cuts are one issue that we're considering because we did legislate the tax cuts after the last election. Uh, they were in three stages and more money into people's pockets means more spending and more spending means more jobs. The income tax cuts for middle people, income workers, would be worth up to $2,565 a year, right? Let's just think about that. You've lost your fucking job. I swore for the first time today, guys. Uh, if you could share this, I'll swear more, make it more fun. If you guys can share it, like it, tag your mates so it can get the reach. Otherwise, we're going to be Samson. Uh, people have lost their jobs, they've lost their businesses, they've lost all different things, right? And allegedly, that middle income earners would be worth up to $2,565 per year better off. They don't have a fucking job, <laughs> right? They don't have a job, they're gone, right? So I don't know what these tax cuts are really gonna do. It's already past the tax season. They're not gonna get their tax returns done this year, right? But anyway, if you got a job, you might be paying a little bit less tax and you'll save 30 bucks a week. You're gonna need your 30 bucks per week because inflation is gonna really fuck you, right? And that's what's gonna happen. So anyway, going on, uh, it goes on to say there's significant savings. Significant savings, right? Is gonna kick in. Two grand ain't no saving, right? You're just extorting me a little bit less money. And then everything's gonna go up in value and I'm gonna have to pay more money, right? Because inflation's coming, right? We should do a segment every week and I'm gonna give you guys a special phone number a little bit later and uh, get you guys to text me through some of your questions that you've got. Uh, this is just to a little hotline number here that I've got. Uh, it's not my normal phone. I'm recording Instagram over here on my normal phone. But um, if you would like to send me some messages um, and share with me some of the things that you have seen go up every week. So it could be groceries, it could be whatever. Just share something. If you've seen inflation hit your life or someone else's life, and let's every week share something that's gone up in value. And you know, one thing I heard about today was meat prices. Hadn't realized it, right? Um, meat prices have gone up. Um, so yeah, what else has gone up? And I mean, when meat prices have gone up, they've gone up double, right? So the cost of what has gone up uh, in what sort of um, you know spectrum. So it, I'm gonna flick over a text message. I'm gonna send out a number very shortly. Um, and um, I don't even know what my phone number is here. Uh, I'm just texting someone now to uh, to text you back my number. But I'll give you guys a number if you've got some stuff that's gone up via inflation, if you guys have got questions. Uh, I'm finding, this is one of the other things for this evening. So I'm gonna try and keep this video condensed to one hour. So when Instagram finishes, we're all finished today. So if you do want questions to come through to me, text me on this number. If I don't have a chance to get to those, num those messages, I will make little snippets of videos to answer these things for you and have more structured videos that are you know getting best use of your time. Uh, on on uh, Tuesday nights. So um, yeah, looking at it, uh, significant savings kick in for those who are earning between 50,000 and 90,000 uh, who will have their total annual tax reduced by $1,080. So if you're earning between 50 grand and 90 grand, you'll be $1,000 better off, right? But you probably don't have a job anymore and uh, you probably don't have a business anymore, but you will get, um, a saving of a thousand bucks. And that thousand dollars is apparently going to uh, fix up this economy that we've got. It's not gonna fix the economy, let's just be real about it, it'd be blunt. Um, but what it will do is that it will, um, you know, form a basis of many more stimulus packages to come. So the ones that we've seen this year, we've seen house builder, job keeper, job maker, uh, tax grants to businesses, business grants, state grants, free $250,000 loans for businesses, uh, backed by the government, we've seen uh, mortgage holidays, um, we've seen tax cuts, um, we've even seen buying up the balance sheet. We have seen so much of the buying up of the balance sheet this year, we've never seen anything like this before. And how come the stock market, right? I still wanna know how in which world this makes sense, right? Because we have seen the worst recession ever. And the day that the news came out, and it was a state of disaster, the worst ever recession uh, in Australia 
we saw the stock market rise by 100 points or by 2%. It's insane. Absolutely insane. Um, they're just going to print more money, guys. I've got a question here. Uh, thank you for your work, Nathan. I'm happy you have brains to understand what's going on. Brave enough to speak out. Thanking you. Um, if you guys, and it's a little t task, so I'm going to go to another website shortly, and I want to share with you guys information of where I find my data from, where I share my data with everybody. Um, if you haven't already, go to birchfeed.com, B-I-R-C-H-F-E-E-D.com. No A U on the end of it, just .com. Um, register on there, you'll get a little email sent to you and follow the prompts and I'll get you in there and show you a, um, a few things in there. Um, from here, uh, the, the cuts increased to 2,500 for Aussies earning between 120 and 200 grand. Right, I can hear it already, right? Some socialist is gonna sit there and be like, oh no, those rich people are getting more, more tax, the people that gave me a job. And I don't have a job anymore. They're getting a tax card of $2,000, right? $2,000 ain't going to buy anything in the future. Let's just be really clear on that. A third stage of tax cuts with a tax rate of 32.5% applied to the vast majority of workers is currently scheduled from 2024. It could take years to turn around what Mr. Frydenberg labeled, labeled the biggest recession since the Great Depression. Economic figures released yesterday for June show the catastrophic extent that months of lockdown have created across the country. The biggest quarterly fall on record, 7%, uh, and the steepest annual plunge since the end of World War II means Australia is firmly in the grip of a deep recession for the first time in a generation. Who of you actually realise that we're in a, a recession, right? Apart from if you're living in Melbourne, right? You might be feeling up and turn up the work for the last three months, four months, five months, six months. Feels that we've actually in a recession. It doesn't really feel like it, right? You see these delivery drivers, Uber drivers, and everyone getting food delivered to them and all this sort of stuff. Absolutely, absolutely crazy. So, um, yeah. Um, looking at uh, some of my other thoughts for the... Um, the week. I've got lots of little notes in here uh, and I'm getting lost in between messages I text to myself through the week and and, uh, and whatnot. So um, so yeah, I'm going to go to Birchfeed shortly, share with you some of my thoughts on what we're seeing at the moment, what we could have predicted in the future uh, and what we are going to see uh, in the future moving forward. Uh, if you guys, so I've just got someone to text me my um, uh, my phone number. Um, if you guys want to write this down, this is this phone that I'm reading to you guys from. If you want to text me some questions, I can answer them for you. Maybe put your just your name and just text me through your questions so I can alert you guys that I'm replying to your text. Uh, the phone number here is 0426 887 564. So 0426 887 564. I might get uh, one of my team just to tag it and pin it onto um, onto the uh, Be Invested uh, Facebook page. So uh, 0426 887 564. Text through any questions you got. Um, and um, if you find yourself throughout the week uh, finding anything that's gone up much more than what it used to be, uh, the cost of goods gone up, Whatever you feel that you've seen inflation hit, text me um, on this number what it is, little photo of it, little comparison, um, and let's discuss it in coming weeks. And I might even throw it out there in Birchfeed. Um, so yeah, one last thing uh, before I go to Birchfeed. This here is the Dow Jones. Um, we have started to see, remember I told you it was gonna crack in, in and around September. Uh, we hit an all-time high. Uh, on the Dow Jones, we've got the biggest recession ever. And um, and we, um, yeah, thanks for tagging that number in, guys. So, yeah, if you want to text through that number, uh, any questions you've got, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, and we're starting to see the Dow Jones fail um, at this point. So we are in September. I believe that we are in the month of where the, the truth will uh, will come out. Um, they will most likely just print straight through this recession. They have showed their hand 
Um, you know, a lot of people keep asking me, and you, you guys might be thinking, Nathan, I thought, you, I thought you told me it was going to be great, but you're reading me out these bad news articles, right? Of course, um, someone just wrote through a message on, on Facebook saying, I just saw Wagyu beef at Ivanhoe for $190 a kilo, right? Beef, $190 a kilo. Everyone should be growing their own beef. And sorry to all the, the you know, people that don't eat meat or whatever. Not that I'm saying go eat not carnivorous, but, you know, go and look after your own, grow on your own cattle, and your own food to be able to put into, uh, you know, your plate without all the chemicals, I guess. So that's certainly what I'm doing um, and a big fan of here myself. Um, See, so going into birch feed, if you haven't got birch feed already, download it, uh, go to birchfeed.com, B-I-R-C-H-F-E-E-D.com, no way you just com and uh it's b-i-r-c-h not b-i-t-c-h like some people like to call me um with it uh, i'll post some random stuff in here we've got 1240 subscribers uh one of my goals is to get it to 10,000 subscribers uh, i was charging a dollar a day 365 dollars a year uh, which is very cheap to get the content that i pass out to you guys um, however at the start of the scamdemic uh, i decided that i would share uh, with you all, um, this for free, um, and yeah, basically, I can see a few of you guys subscribing to it now, so birchfeed.com, it'll automatically send you a link uh, via your email, just enter in your details, get access into it, you need to download an app called Telegram Messaging App, and it's just a closed loop um, messaging service, basically, where I share with you guys uh, articles and stories and, and things on a day-to-day -day basis, so today, some of the things I shared today was a little bit about the history of money. I talked about uh, Abraham Lincoln. You know, he got shot in the back of the head. Found it interesting that you know uh, JFK got shot in the back of the head, assassinated. Two people got died. Same sort of thing. Why did they die? And what got repealed when they got assassinated um, was both some banking um, uh, acts. Uh, for example, JFK was executive order triple. Uh, 11110 um go read about it um and looking at you know who really controls the world uh, there's some videos that i posted uh, going back about two years ago in here some videos that are from uh six years ago uh basically highlighting how there's 147 corporations which control the world um you know 147 corporations right that's not many considering we've got like nine billion people ten billion people maybe a few less now that you know they've been killed from this scamdemic i guess but um more will be populating soon if they can um but yeah 147 companies control everybody and you know looking at what sort of interests they follow right the media right i've been on the media over 100 times i've had segments on different uh, forms of platforms that have contributed to over the years um i think i used to write articles for gq um, you know, all different stuff over the years. Uh, the media like some of my stories, but they're like, we can't publish them because it doesn't uh, fit in line with their pub with their with their advertisers. And you know that is very interesting, right? If if they're not allowed to show information, but they are showing certain information, there is agendas there, right? And those agendas are paid for. Um, who is positioning the people there? Who are the people aligned with? Around 140 mega corporations that control everything you you have. I started to take the labels off my water because I don't want to share. I don't even know what the water company is. Just some crappy water. I bought a whole pile of them a while back. But you know who controls the the produce? If you wanted to get your food into a major retail outlet, um, it would have to be meeting certain standards. Who controls those advertising standards? Who controls those quality standards? Who controls uh, the decisions as to what Produce gets sold at a large bulk uh, you know, retailer. Who uh, who controls that? Info? Who controls that? And um, you know, they're the questions we should be asking ourselves, right? Why are the seeds different on the food that we eat? Who is in? Who is creating this food that we're eating? Why does the food taste different? Why do we, you know, live in a world full of you know false idols that are out there trying to you know sell us an agenda? Um, what else is in Birch Feed? We have a video here, um, which I don't know why it's doing that, but a video of people getting sprayed down uh, with chemicals, right? Look at this. 
These people, they're just getting off a boat, off a plane, and they're getting sprayed with chemicals. Who's What's in that chemical, right? What's being put inside our bodies? What's in that chemical? What is that chemical? I don't know, right? Why are they spraying? Why are they in a hazmat suit spraying civilians with chemicals? I just find it interesting, right? We should be asking these questions, right? Um, uh, we've got here a video here uh, from a guy called George Gammon. It's happening in secret: the crisis in the economy and the end and the game of the Federal uh, Reserve. Um, so, I I share information with you guys for an hour or two hours on a, a Tuesday night. Uh, I try and do little videos. I try and you know put out stuff via the YouTube channel, Facebook Lives, Facebook, um, you know wherever I can. However, I only have twenty four hours in the day. I've got you know, all these businesses that I run and, you know, things that I do, I can't make content all day, every day. But if I'm watching something and I think that it's of value and I've learned something from it and I feel that you guys could, um, you know, I guess that's why I like to share this stuff so you can learn and follow other people. And, you know, I like to think that I know everything in the world, but, you know, um, I saw some stats, whether they're true or not, um, that every minute uh, content that's uploaded to YouTube is like 80 years of someone's life. How would every person set of eyeballs around the world throughout history of millennium be able to share all the information? So it's just different people's vantage points. And I think that's what critical free thinking should be. Um, and hence why I decided to uh, create Birchfeed to be able to share history before it happens, right? I see things that don't sit right. I saw an economic calamity uh, going back three years ago. I saw four years. Uh, I started talking about it very publicly and I put every single bit of my credibility on the line to tell you guys that we were going to see um, a, a, a depression of biblical proportions. Thanks, Trent, for sending me a text message. I will uh, get to that very shortly. It'll sort of pop up. Um, here is an article here from 2018 uh, from the World Integrated Trade Solution. Uh, and it's in Birchfeed. And it goes on to read about some test instruments um, and tariffs for diagnostic instruments and apparatus using that word with the two said numbers at the end of it, which ends in a nine. Um, I can't say it because I'll censor the, 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 the hell out of this. Um, but that was in 2018. So why were they talking about this back in 2018? Just interesting. Um, Jeff Berwick's one of my favourites. He's a he's a funny guy. Uh, he's actually in Birchfeed. Uh, yeah, Jeff's in Birchfeed. Jeff Berwick, uh, the dollar vigilante. He's from um, Mexico, and he posts some very interesting stuff. And I love sharing his videos because um, it's a good way. If you think that I'm a little bit out there, and some of the beliefs that I've shared with you guys over the course of this year, are a little bit you know thought provoking and whatnot. Um, this guy certainly. Um, does have some good videos, but I never share with the videos after I've watched them. So if I'm posting something, I've watched it, looked at it, um, and yeah, um, they're good ones. Um, new uh, cases of certain said words um, and the roadmap moving forward. Uh, it's interesting that there is 666 um, sort of deaths on certain dates. Yeah. It's just interesting that, you know, there is that. Um, we've gone, uh, shared certain things that are happening in certain markets. Everyone thought the share market looked safe. People are still questioning, right? Didn't you say September, October, November, we're going to see the share market starting to crack? That looked like a point drop uh, from 6,116 6, pips down to 5,966 pips, which the market fell off a cliff. And then within 48 hours, it picked back up, right? Why is the market going back up? Because the central banks are buying up the balance sheets. They are buying up these insolvent companies, right? These companies are dead. They're never returning. They are people in vegetative state. And they are being sold back up. They're being propped up, right? Who is buying this junk? Interesting. Um, looking at uh, what else is in here? Um, some of those articles that I shared beforehand, um, some censorship, understanding how the the, 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 the mindset uh, is being centered, censored, your content is being censored, the censorship of videos like these, censorship 
Um, you know, uh, it's, it's just happening. Uh, Adam just asked here on Insta, do we think we are in end times? No, I don't like to speculate that we're in end times. I don't think we're there. I just think it is an interesting time that we're in. Um, yeah, just like the Industrial Revolution, um, just like every sort of decade when there's an issue, people becoming more trapped, more enslaved, more committed to that system. Um, I believe that we're seeing a change in that system and people are going to become a lot more entrapped uh, in time moving forward. So, yeah, like, do I think we're in end times? No, but do I think people are going to lose a lot more uh, liberty and freedom? 100% I am. And, uh, you know, sometimes people ask me on these videos, like, why am, uh, like, you know, you're so successful, you've bought all these properties and whatnot. Why do you want to go down conspiracy theory roads? I don't believe I'm going down conspira conspiracy theory roads. I just believe that I'm seeing patterns, I'm seeing data, I'm researching, and it's like, that's very interesting, right? When people, when I first started the group of companies, the being invested group of companies in the community and built this community, um, you know, I thought the biggest thing that I got from it was seeing other people achieve the same results because it gave me great confidence that, you know, building a, a property portfolio of hundreds of properties can be a lonely sort of journey. You can't relate to the average layman on that front. So um, building a community of people that are doing the same things actually became very invigorating for me um, just due to the fact that I've got other people I can chat to, share ideas with. Uh, chat strategy with and, and all that sort of stuff. Being able to look at these things and have critical thinking and having good conversations is something that I get great excitement out of because you know I've got people that have still got their brain attached and they're not you know programmed from a, a system. Uh, yeah. So um, there's what I posted the other week. I used to post a lot of information about Deutsche Bank, um, and that is one company that is hell of manipulation going on there and with good reason. The reason why uh, Deutsche Bank is being manipulated is that going back in the GFC, uh, there was about seven and a half to eight trillion dollars, seven and a half to eight trillion dollars worth of derivatives around the housing market. That's why when the GFC, it was the, the mortgage crisis uh, of 2008, it's basically uh, a lot of these crappy products were wrapped together and tied up and sold off as, as funds and sold to super funds and all that. And a lot of people lost their money. Uh, people thought it was a great time. They were having great, you know, opportunity and whatnot. Very similar to what we're seeing right now, just mind you. Um, however, that was one country with some bad actors and some bad institutions, which was spread out across the whole banking system. Um, which was eight, seven and a half to eight trillion dollars worth of derivative bond. Uh, here we are in 2020, and we have one institution being the uh, the Deutsche Bank, which has over 50 trillion dollars worth of derivatives on their books. And these derivatives are not um, derivatives that you would see on um, on. Sorry, I've got a twitchy eye today. Um, these are not uh, derivatives on property. They're derivatives on everything. Student loans. Uh, cars. Um, there was this project out back in the day called Cash for Clunkers. So basically, they paid you to take away your crappy old car and for you uh, an incentive for you to buy a new car, uh, obviously attached to, to finance. And these are all the loans and the products which are wrapped together in order to um, to get um, to where we are. So when we see Deutsche Bank implode, it will be very very interesting. Um, lots of in other interesting. Uh, things in there. Um, I put in there a discussion about um, that, that yield curve uh, that I talk about every so often. Uh, one little thing for a lot of people that are in um, in um, in uh, Birch Feed is you can actually go back and type through uh, and search. So basically what you do is you go to the main screen and pull the screen down. So don't go into the Birch feed itself, go into the Telegram main screen, uh, do a pull down of the screen, and it'll come up with a little search box. And you can type different words and different um, different things in there. Um, and I don't wanna go through too much because there's lots of um, different groups and people add me back from the crypto days of all these ICOs and stuff like that. People were adding uh, this account. And so I've got all these groups that randomly pop up. But one of them that I love is HARP, right? So H-A-A-R-P, HARP, um, which is basically weather control. 
So we've been posting this stuff in here for years. Uh, we can go in there and type in um, central banks. We can type in, let's type in GFD just for the fun of it. Here we are with lots of um, lots of things that are in there um, re relevant to it. So you can actually do searching and indexing inside of Birchfeed. So if you are, um, you know, in Birchfeed, uh, you can actually search. Um, and it'll just take you back to things that are wrote, uh, everything that were predicted through the GF GFD. This one here is from April 30, a currency uh, reset. There's lots of videos. I reckon there's probably about a thousand hours, maybe 2,000, 3,000. I wouldn't like to guess how many hours worth of content here, right? People go and spend $10 a month for programming, right? They go and watch Netflix. It's got some videos in there and it's all conditioning. You can go watch that pandemic show that's on um, on Netflix and uh, you'll see it's a propaganda outlet spruiking certain things that, you know, get put into people's um, blood. Um, which I don't like to mention on here because we will get censored for it. However, you can go watch these videos where it's very propaganda, you know, pro that, um, or you can, you know, go and subscribe here and get access to um, daily information. Um, if you do like, um, you know, Birch Feed and what you're seeing, maybe write in the uh, the comment section or even share a. Uh, if you're liking, actually, if one thing that I could ask for for the 1,243 subscribers in here um, is if you could, uh, if you like what you see in Birch Feed, maybe just share on a Google, put in a Google review so people can share and we get indexed and it pushes it up using Google. Maybe put a Google review just as to what you learn. Um, I have a lot of people that message me and say thanks a lot for Birch Feed. Um, you know, I get a lot of free information. I don't even watch news anymore. I go to Birch Feed every day. I see what's in there. I watch that. I get a good understanding of what's happening in my world. Um, just because the world is screwed up out there doesn't mean your world has to be. Uh, you can plan, you can prepare, you can protect yourself. Uh, you can have a greater level of uh, liberty and freedom by you know just improving a few things in your life, right? I've talked about how to hatch seeds uh, in there, seeds from a fruit seeds from vegetables right i see people out there talking about i want to grow some plants you've inspired me to grow an orchard in my yard you've inspired me to create a veggie batch and then they go down to bunnings and buy all the plants and the seeds from there and they're gmo'd right i've actually actually got some the other day someone uh, bought and sent these over to me they're sitting on my dining table um, and these are actual organic um, seeds no, i haven't put them in yet um, tomato cherry cocktail these are sort of what good seeds sort of look like they are organic seeds right but if you don't want to go out and buy seeds or you can't find organic seeds because they're pretty hard to come across um, you know certified organic seeds you could go and find yourself some organic food and actually harvest the seeds and each uh, fruit and vegetable is different um, did you know, like, for example, a strawberry has uh, the outside, those little black things on the outside, they're the seeds for it. So you can actually uh, get away to uh, dry them out, take the seeds out and plant them and grow strawberry plants from that. Um, you know, did you find that on the news? No, you didn't, right? Throughout this whole saga of fear that's going on out there, not once have I heard them say, protect your immune system, build your immune system up. Make sure you're being healthy and make sure, you know, at the end of the day, when things go wrong like this, do you want to be borrowing from the toughest guy on the block or do you want to be the toughest guy on the block? I haven't been working out much lately, right? But when I do, I get built pretty quickly. Um, however, from having supplies like the toughest guy on the block, that's what I want to be. And I think everybody should have their own level of supplies they build for themselves, whether it be food or whether it be access to community or, or whatever the case may be. So I'm just going to go back through some old stuff on here um, and what like for example I share with you guys what happened back in 2011 and 2010 uh, and put some commentary there about how you know things are dying whenever you see something in birch feed be sure that it's from me um, so yeah 
Um, looking at um, what else is coming through here. Um, lots and lots of videos, lots and videos. So I don't know if I'm going to keep going on about Birchfeed, but you know, if you do have questions about Birchfeed, if there's something in there that you would like to know, know more about, feel free to send me a, um, a message about something you'd like some clarification. I'm going to start reading through the text messages. For those of you that, um, that don't um, have this number, I'm going to give this number out. It's the Birchy hotline. Um, I don't reply. I've got on my main phone um, lots of text messages, lots of things that come through. But I will try and, you know, if you send me something through on this number, I will try and address it. I'll try and attend to it and uh, bring it up as, as answering the question. So if you've got the questions, you can either post them online, which I don't get through them all the time. However, if you would like to text me them, and I'll give you the number, so you've got a pen, paper, phone, device, whatever, it is 0426 887 564. Uh, flick as a text, and I will, um, yeah. So, um, looking at a question here, uh, hi Nathan, enjoyable lives like always. Would you recommend taking, uh, staying on a mortgage repayment holiday if you don't uh, really need the support, but will help you uh, save more for a deposit for your next loan. Um, good question. So some people ask me on a regular basis, you know, should I put my home loan on a mortgage holiday? Um, and you need to be cautious with this, right? Now I said at the start, I never did it, right? And I was excited by it because I was like, you know, if I could save $100,000 a month and uh, put that uh, to the side, that's like six months, 600 grand. If I do it for 12 months now, it would have been $1.2 million. I can go buy a lot of properties cash. However, my biggest concern is that as we get to the other side of this, what will be the terms and conditions of people putting their properties on mortgage holidays? Will the banks ask you to sell down, reduce your debt, et cetera, et cetera? They all could be terms and conditions that we don't even realize are gonna be a part uh, at this point. So if you don't need to go on the mortgage holiday, probably best not to, because uh, then you have more control and uh, set yourself in a better position. Um, yeah, it does lay open to you know an opportunity there to save a deposit by not paying your mortgage. Uh, one other thing to be aware of is um, I was seeing a lot of Telegram codes um, of people messaging uh, Telegram codes. Um, this 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 number that I gave is to ask questions, not to uh, send a code to. If you've signed up to Telegram and signing up to Birchfeed. Um, follow the, the links you need to go to telegram and enter that code into it so um, follow the, the description on the email that came from Birchfeed and uh, welcome you all to the community if you um, if you would like to have better conversations with your friends and, and family and those that you care about and, and, and love if you could go and share Birchfeed you know share the the um, the, the, the website birchfeed.com your friends and family can subscribe as well it's all for free I might go back to it in the future and say anyone that wants to come in uh, has to pay $365 a year. But for those of you who are coming on board now, it is free. Uh, there is people in there that used to pay for it um, and they had a good time in there, uh, but it is for free. Um, if you would like to have your friends and family on there, um, share with them the birchfeed.com website. And if you could share on Facebook and tag, we should run some sort of competition on it. Um, so I've got a question here. Um, what is it going on in this group? All of a sudden, 2014, 2016, early 2080 k <laughs> Yeah, well. Got some interesting things coming through. Thanks, Trent, for sharing that. <laughs> um, Got a message from Victor. Uh, hi, Nathan. I got your number through Facebook. Please let me know if my text is to you. He's not welcome. Uh, I'll totally respect that. No, send your text through. If you've got questions, send them through. I will help out uh, where I can. So I can see some people trying to spam me, some people trying to be funny here. So that's cool. Um, question from Victor is, may I ask your advice uh, on my three investment properties in Queensland? Um, I'm curious uh, about the capital gains in Queensland for the next two to four years. Any insight? Um, I think if you'd like, maybe I can get one of my team to have a chat to you one-on-one -on, -one on that front. Um, I believe we're going to see lots of growth coming over the course of the next 
um, sort of um, you know, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months and time to come due to the fact that all of this money printing is going to find a home somewhere. It's going to find a home at the moment. It's finding a home in uh, gold at an all-time high. It's finding money into property at an all-time high. It surpassed its, in a lot of areas, its peaks of three years ago when the market fell. Um, seeing the stock market hit all-time highs. Um, so if this money printing and currency creation keeps going on, um, we will see those markets, all the markets go back up. So uh, I used to do like a, uh, for my inner circle sort of investors, a, a video uh, or a mail outs to everybody um, at the end of each year, talking about the year that was and the year that's ahead. Um, I'd give speeches about it at my uh, end of year sort of uh, gatherings. And I would talk about the things that we saw and the things that we would see in the future. And I got asked, going back about three years ago, um, what um, what do I see happening in 2018? And I was like, 2017, 2018, and I said, look, all markets are gonna be flat. And I got laughed at, right? And then uh, asked last year, in 2018, what's gonna happen? And I was like, 2018, everything's gonna be flat. We're gonna see some markets go backwards, be very cautious with what you're buying. Then I got asked in 20, going into 2019, what do I see? I said, we're going to see interest rates go down um, at least twice. Uh, it's not going to happen. It's going to happen right in the middle of the year. Uh, we're going to see interest rates go to zero and then head into negative territory. Um, we saw that happen. I said, when we saw that happen, we would start to see growth in all of these markets again. Uh, some markets will prime for large growth in other markets. Um, naturally, I believe that Sydney uh, is the doormat to the country. We're going to need to keep bringing in more uh, sort of tax slaves into this country to print more money. So we will see more people come into Sydney. Uh, some mining areas we'll see some good growth in. Some uh, like Queensland, I think, is the most prime state in Australia. Uh, there is other states. I don't talk about it, you know, openly as to what's going to happen, but you know. I do have my thoughts, I do have my feedback on that. Uh, if you'd like to have a more of a one-on-one -on -one chat uh, with one of my team, they can give you a bit more thoughts and feedback on what I'm seeing out there and where I see the future to be. Um, got a question here from someone. Hey, Birchie, what uh, is the best way to buy gold and silver? Uh, so a lot of people watch the videos. I put a lot of videos that are sort of pro gold and silver uh, into Birch feed, and they go on to explain why gold and silver is good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, however, um, you know, always be cautious, uh, no financial advice, of course, when going out to purchase uh, gold and silver and whatnot. Um, it is, um, you know, a different market. There is no cash flow from it. It is a different type of investment. I've never gone out there to buy, you know, 100 grand worth of gold and 100 grand worth of silver on a certain date. Um, I have been collecting this stuff over two decades and I do collect it in small amounts uh, and get it from all different sources. I used to purchase from a place over in Perth that went bankrupt during administration last year. Um, and of recent times, I've been buying it from a few bullion dealers, a few coin shops. I've been buying from coin shops that don't realize what they're selling and more specialized sort of um, uh, bullion. So I might actually do a video specifically on bullion and I will do that shortly coming up um, and, and answer that question for you. Um, I do notice that uh, we have one minute, one, one minute and 30 seconds remaining on Instagram, meaning that we have timed out at one hour today, and I'm going to keep this very short and to one hour. Uh, keep your questions coming through. As I said beforehand, uh, if you have questions, uh, have anything you've seen out there in the marketplace that's in, in, in um, inconsistency uh, with either a news article or whether it be uh, something you want more clarification on, whether it be something you've seen that's gone up a lot in price, like I saw Victor wrote beforehand, uh, meat prices have gone up to $190 a kilo for Wagyu steak. Um, text message this number, which is 0426 887 564. I will post it on the, um, the actually I might post it in Birchfeed, um, the phone number, so all of you can get in there. So if you're not in Birchfeed, uh, go to the website birchfeed.com, subscribe. I post out there so much data, so much content. I've been posting there for nearly four years. Um, go and research different um, sort of words. If you've got a keyword of something you're unsure of, search it inside of Birchfeed 
and you can you know see what I've put out there about it beforehand on that specific topic. Uh, on that note, uh, if you do like what I put out there, uh, make sure you subscribe, share, uh, write your thoughts and comments on Google Review uh, for Birchfeed. And uh, until next week, guys, stay safe, keep being awesome. We'll catch up soon. Bye for now.